Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Sophie and this channel is chronicling my journey of living my best life with multiple chronic health conditions. Today I wanted to talk to you about medical records, whether you have access to your medical records and are reading them, and if you do have access, why you should be. If you are reading them, you have probably noticed that they are not always accurate. I can say mine are rarely, if ever, 100% accurate. Most of the time, if they are required to chart a full head-to-toe -to -toe assessment, it will be inaccurate because they won't have done one. So anything they chart isn't going to be accurate unless it happens to be normal. For example, it's not unusual for doctors to chart a completely normal head-to-toe -to -toe assessment, having never asked me any of the questions that they charted answers to. So they will say that I don't have any constipation or diarrhea. They will say I don't have any nausea. They will say I don't have any trouble sleeping. Basically, they say everything is normal. That's the... initial thing that's in the system more than likely and so they just leave it which obviously if you have issues that's not being reflected in the chart and further down the line if you need to prove for one reason or another that you were having this set of symptoms at this time it's a problem when your chart doesn't accurately reflect that now, if you're going to the ER or something, if your main problem is something that they're going to be charting, that will normally be correct. But on normal doctor visits, when they chart head-to-toe -to -toe assessments, I have rarely, if ever, seen one charted correctly. And as I said, most times they don't do a head-to-toe -to -toe assessment and instead of just charting the bit of the assessment that they do, in fact, complete, they just chart that everything was normal. I've also had doctors incorrectly chart sort of the timeline of when things happen, whether this is by typo or a lot of them use different uh, voice dictation technology now as well so the technology won't always pick up the correct words so the notes can be quite a mess in that case sometimes and again depending on where the inaccuracy is it can really mess things up down the line and it's not always easy to get things fixed it can be as easy as getting in contact with the provider and just saying, hey, you wrote XYZ in your note, that's not correct, please fix it. Sometimes they do, but normally you have to go through medical records and there's normally a form that you have to complete to amend your medical record. You have to tell them when it was, who the provider was, what you think is wrong, why you think it's wrong, and what you think is right. And then even then, they can still deny your request to amend the record. If that happens, there's another step you can do, which is basically to write a statement of disagreement and say why you disagree with them. And again, reiterate what you think needs to be said in your medical record. If you don't want to write a full statement of disagreement, you can write back saying that you want your request for amendment to be included in your medical record anytime that specific record is requested by an outside person or organization. But all of that takes work. It takes effort. So I'm just now starting the process to amend some of my records that should have been amended quite a while ago, but I just haven't had the energy to do so. One of my medical records from, well, technically one from 2020 had stated that I was bipolar because at the time I was taking lithium 
and lithium is most often used to treat those with bipolar disorder. But I was taking lithium because I very much wanted to on alive myself, and it is one of the only medications that have been shown in studies to decrease that in the people with severe major depression. So that is why I was taking it. And the provider who wrote the chart didn't ask why I was taking it and just assumed I was taking it for bipolar, so that was in my medical record. At the time, I did not get it amended because I was in no cognitive state to go through the process I just outlined. It didn't really follow me until a year later when I was seen by an outside hospital. And they again in their medical records put that I was bipolar, again not asking me why I was on lithium. And again, I did not ask for it to be amended because I still was not in the right frame of mind. I was still very much sleeping 18 or more hours a day. A lot of times I had trouble forming coherent sentences, a lot of word finding difficulties, a lot more than I have right now. So there was just no way I was going to be able to do that. I was recently at an appointment where I was at this hospital and I told them hey, this is in my record and it's not correct, so when you go to chart, like, please take it out. And when I went to review their record, I saw that they had not taken it out and it was still in. Since I am much more functional now, I did start the process to get the record amended, so we will see how that goes. I, re uh, I submitted a request to amend my medical record and stated that I did not have never been diagnosed as bipolar. I was on lithium for severe major depression and wanting to unalive myself. So we will see what happens with that. As you guys know, at the Cleveland Clinic, I attempted to get my medical record amended and they denied my request. I have written a statement of disagreement, which I have tried to fax numerous times, but their fax actually isn't a fax. I finally realized I could just call the fax number to see if it was indeed a fax number and it is not. All it does is ring. So it is not a fax at all. So I will have to snail mail them a copy, which I did not want to do because I originally snail mailed them the amendment request and I was told they never got it. So we will see what happens with that. I will mail it to them this weekend. But I just think it's really important if you have access to your medical record that you are reading what your providers are writing because it may not be accurate and those inaccuracies can follow you and then it's that much harder to get them corrected because then instead of having them corrected at one location, you might need to have them corrected at multiple locations. In my case, with the bipolar diagnosis, it was in two different hospital systems. The original hospital system really should know better because it's the same hospital system that my psych NP is at. So they literally have direct access to all of my medical records because they use the same medical charting system. So that was just a provider being lazy and assuming why I was taking a medication without looking at my prior medical records or asking me. And then the second hospital system just took the ball and ran with it. So we'll see if I can get it corrected on that second hospital system. Um, as far as the first hospital system goes, it's never been in any other provider note from that hospital system, just the one. So that was a provider issue, not necessarily a hospital system issue. But one of the first things I do when I get back from doctor appointments is I look for the doctor's note and I will continue looking until it is available to me. There have been times I've had to ask the provider to make the note available or let them know that it's not available and it eventually becomes available but I just firmly believe that everyone needs to stay on top of what their providers are writing, especially if you have chronic illnesses and are seeing a lot of different providers. 
it's just really important to know what they're saying you said because again it's not always what you actually said and it can make a big difference in the long run anyway that is my little PSA for this week I hope you guys are having a great day whenever it is you are seeing this and I will talk to you next time bye guys